Disclaimer. The following video is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Views expressed are the creator's own and not necessarily endorsed by Easy Do's It Entertainment. Viewers are advised to seek professional advice, and Easy Do's It Entertainment is not responsible for any actions taken. Based on the content, viewer discretion is advised. Industry shaken by my revelations of their dark secrets. They retaliate by sending a supposed black brother to discredit Cat Williams. But we all know, he's just a chump and a puppet that they put in a girl's dress. The truth always prevails no matter how hard they try to bury it, exposing the filth until the very end. Stay tuned for the real story. Cat was in that position at one you point. You were the guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. You fucked off promo shoots. You fucked off your promo fucking uh, trips that they had set up for you. You became a risk to the studios, which is why the studios stopped fucking with you. Why was he a risk? He chose drugs. Oh. We good now? Because the people want to know, well, why would he get blackballed? Yeah, oh, because I was because that. because in thirty years I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing, you will tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that. I value that. I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. They all know it. Why? Because you don't make me the villain. Not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't have no stories of doing nobody dirty. And, and they'll just go out and they'll lie. The, the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDb. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. How? That's how a legacy is built. So all of these shortcut takers, I, I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there. There's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they did to get there. <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? <laughs> <laughs> and this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. Behind my back, I'm nothing. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. But in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. I can't do that because I. Uh, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. You see that nigga had to take off that lace front high top fade because he came out here to battle me out there. I play no motherfucking game, Steve. Yeah. I'm a little nigga, I fight dirty. <laughs> you did. You did, baby. What the fuck is he thinking about? Man, he trying to copy off me and bring that ugly ass sparkly ass time. That's why he couldn't do stand up anymore. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? So on the behalf of Bernie, 
I, I would have to say what I have to say. That's why I'm saying, that's why I can't let Ricky Smiley say he was supposed to play Money Mike. Because I wrote the words for Money Mike. I designed the hair for Money Mike. I collaborated with the wardrobe department and made outfits to make sure that no one in America would be wearing what Money Mike was wearing. I told them to go get the Prowler. I then told them to paint it purple. I told them don't have an actor at playing a pimp. We could get an actual pimp Archbishop Magic Don Juan. The, play. the truth of the matter is, the money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. And that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie. And say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull. But we're talking about comedy. Right. Where I have all the credibility and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never right. funny, right. no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. Like, I, I did far too much work for somebody to come years later and try to tag along just for their own self-aggrandizement. Why didn't Cube set the record straight? Terry Crews could have set the record straight. Mike Epps could have set the record straight. Why none of them set the record straight? That's what you were supposed to ask him when he told you those lies that but no I didn't one's know ever heard. Lie. Um, I just want to clarify. Uh, when we bring in a new you know, comedian, uh, we do have them try out for different roles. Ricky did um, give Money Mike a shot. Uh, but when we saw him and, you know, we kind of saw how he moved and how he was, you know, um, auditioning, we decided that he would be a better, uh, you know, Santa Claus, uh, which was, to me, the perfect casting. When we saw Cat, you know, when I saw him, I just knew that he was perfect for Money Mike. Cat, you know, said he wrote his role, which, I mean, the role was written, but he enhanced it. This is why Cat um, was so dope in the movie. You know, Money Mike had a small role, you know, about as big as the Santa Claus role. But when we start filming, he was giving us such magic that we kept expanding his role and giving him more to do because he was on point. You know, when we shoot these movies, you know, for one, the scripts are fire or they wouldn't even do it. The scripts are a laugh out funny. But we shoot the script. But once we get what we need from the script, we let the comedians ad lib, riff, you know, play with the words, do their thing. You know, you know, Cat, he, uh, he wrote a lot of his part because, you know, like I said, he was giving us jewels, so we were keeping the camera rolling. He was coming off the dome. He was coming prepared every day to steal the show. You know, that was his mission. And, um, you know, that's what he did, you know, with the movie. Um, and it, it launched his career, you know. The second thing I want to clear up, it was never, I would never shoot a rape scene uh, in a movie, especially like Friday, um, where you actually see this happening on camera. That ain't my style. It's all... Um, you know, that was, to me, a little discrepancy there. Um, and um, I'm proud of the movie. I'm proud of um, all the guys who've, you know, come through, you know, acute vision production and went on to do bigger and better things.